Okay, folks, so I'm halfway through doing a job on the door, which I won't show too much of what's going on there. Uh, I'm on stop with that at the moment because I'm waiting for a new toy to help me with that. So all will be revealed as time goes on. So what I thought I'd do to keep the old algorithm going, I thought I'd put the video out. So I've been thinking about doing this one for a while. Now I will say at the outset, I am not an expert. Now you, you guys who follow the channel will know I, I don't consider myself an expert by any means. I, all I do is, it's a very much a hobby for me. It's not my trade, anything like that. So I thought I'd put a video out on what I've learned over the years about welding and how I find the easiest way to weld uh, a few different joints and grinding them off and, and decent light and stuff like that. So that's what this is going to be about. Hopefully it'll be of use to you guys out there. And uh, especially, obviously the hobbyists, you, you guys who know how to weld, don't need me to tell you how to do it. But for the hobbyist guys out there who are learning or having to go to the project yourselves, hopefully this will be good to you. So I hope you enjoy and let me know what you think. One of the first things you need is clean metal. So if you've got something with a bit of paint on it, you, you, you need to clean it back. That's absolutely vital for a tidy weld. So what we'll do with this is we'll show the most common weld I probably use, which is a butt weld. So we'll uh, trim this back a bit. So that will leave us to make a butt weld. Just some bits of scrap I got. Just uh, hammer those flat. Right, I'm going to set them up as well, so they are not sitting on anything, so it's not being backed by anything. So if I put a, if I put a bend on those, I can then pull them up a little bit. There they are, lovely. So you see now, there's no backing on that, and there is, this is just less, this is 0.9 mil steel. So you'll see there's a, I've got a gap there of about a millimetre, just or just less than. Now some will say tight, some will say a gap. Personally, I prefer a little gap if possible. So let's get the welder going and see if I can set up uh, a way of recording it as it's welding as well, hopefully. Something like this to, to check across it. Make sure you're flat across there, because when it comes to grinding off, that makes a huge difference. And of course, you need a good earth. So, should be able to earth straight off the uh, device, really, with this. There we go. Right, so, when going for the first tack, you want to aim for either one side or the other, and the, the tack will grow across. Lovely. Probably could have been a little bit hotter. See how it's bumped up? So a little bit hotter. So turn up the voltage a little bit and go again. It's quite cold today, so the temperature of the steel itself would be a bit cooler. Now, another interesting thing about uh, welding, you'll see that gap has shrunk there. I will come back in a minute if I, if I try to remember to come back to that to explain why. You always get a shrink with welding. Let's get another, another one in, in there. Oops, still a bit cold. And again. Okay, you can see how that one's a bit shallower because I've turned the heat up. Now what I will do next, still there, uh, well what I should be wear, doing for a start is wearing a glove. So we put a glove on. Because UV light from the welder is not good for your skin. Now I, I feel a bit of a hypocrite mentioning this because I always forget to put gloves on. And some of you have actually mentioned it to me. So try and look after your skin. So what I do next now, if I was to run this. What I used to, a mistake I used to make a lot when I first started welding when I was younger, 
try and run continuous beads. It, it, it's not worth doing. So what I will do is run a tack against that one, tack against that one, and tack against that one, and then continue those tacks. Now if you're on a, a panel, you will get shrinkage and warpage. So the slower you do this, and if you let it cool down in between, you'll, you'll mitigate against that warpage. So you see what we're doing is stacking tacks. Now, now let's see if I can get a shield over the camera so you can see that better. There are things we do to make things work. Right, okay, so that's got that taped onto the front of there. Let's see if I can get a decent video of my actual welding. Right, well, I just had a quick look at that video. It, it could have been better because the torch was in the way. So the next, on the next one, I'll see if I can rearrange the camera so the torch isn't in the way. But you can see now the weld we got there. Now, what you will see as well is a distortion has happened in that because of the speed at which we went along with that welding and see how far the heat has travelled. So again, if you're, if you're doing a big panel, if you, don't want to control, if you don't want to control the distortion, slow and steady is the way. But the principle is the same as that. Now underneath, this is what you're looking at, you want to hope for get on the back side of the uh, welding, these those little dots. That shows good penetration and that is where the gap comes in. That really helps with that. Now it would be possible to tap this <coughs> flat. Now one misconception I was always understood is that you can't planish MIG welds. Uh, that's not entirely true. They don't planish as well or flatten out <clears throat> as well as TIG welds do. Enough. But they will flatten out a little bit. So if I I'll show you what I mean by that. If I if you tap on the weld itself, it, it spreads it back out again to overcome the shrink. We'll get a rubbish hammer for that. I'll use me uh, Brutus hammer for this. So tapping directly on the weld itself, which hopefully you'll be able to see. And you start to take out some of that distortion because it spreads it back out again. So I think what I'll do is explain next why, why that happens. That, uh, So there is a very good reason why that happens, and let's see if I can explain it. Uh, there is, um, many of you, if you like this sort of channel, will probably know about Trev's blog. He did a really clever thing to explain how this works. Let's see if I can set up something to show you. Alright, so what this is going to do is demonstrate what happens with shrinking and welding. Because as you heat something up, of course it expands. And as it cools down, it contracts. So you would think with a weld, it would heat up a certain amount and then contract back again a certain amount. So what I've done, I've measured the length of that. Unfortunately, the battery's gone on my calipers, so I can't uh, show you the length of it, but you see it's a nice snug fit in there. Now if I heat this up and then let it cool down normally without, without any constraints, you'll see what happens. Now, while it's still hot, you'll see that has expanded. I can't get the calipers on it. Okay, so it's expanded just a little tiny bit. So we'll let that cool down naturally. 
and then uh, we'll see what happens next. Okay, so that's cold now, or cooler. And you'll see, it's obviously cold enough to touch and hold my hand tight. Calipers haven't changed, they're still what they were. That now fits back in there, nice and snug, as it was. Now, that's because it's it's been it's been allowed to expand and contract with nothing acting on it. So I've got it just between the jaws of the vice now, just, just very lightly held. So let's warm it up again, let's glow, get it glowing again, and it should fall out when it cools down. Right, so hopefully what we're going to demonstrate with this is that's what happens with welding. So as you weld, the whole thing is expanding because it's got nowhere to go. It's, it's trapped by the two jaws of the vise there. So it'll bunch up in the middle or, or, or twist. So as it cools down now, it should fall out. There it goes. Hey, it worked. <laughs> what that, what's that demonstrating is, is what happens with the weld. So as each weld pool expands, it's constrained by the metal either side. So the, the jaws of the vise are effectively the metal. And because it can't expand into there very far, it bunches up. And as it cools down, that bunches shrinks and pulls the metal together. And that's where your distortion comes from. And that's why when you see guys planishing or flattening out the weld, that's what they're doing. They're spreading the weld back out again to, to, put, to get rid of that shrinkage. So you see now, now that this is cold, it's now stone cold, put it back in our calipers. See how it's, it's shorter. And in fact, I don't think you can see that down the shape length of it, but it's all twisted out of shape because it couldn't go anywhere. It's had to bul either bulge up in the middle or twist out of shape, and that's what's happened. And look how much shorter that is now as a result of that. Okay, so this is the welder I use for those who are not used to the channel. It's an Artec uh, MIG 180. It's not the cheapest welder, and it's sort of a mid range. Uh, it, well, so it is within the hobbyist budget, but it is absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm not being paid to say that. I bought this with my own money, uh, so I'm not being sponsored for this. But the biggest gain with this, and I suppose it's with any sort of um, inverter type welder, is the control over the voltage. You've got infinite control over the voltage and the wire speed. Unlike the, uh, the old welders, which are click, 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 click. They're not so easy to control, and you can't get the, the you can't uh, tune them very nicely. So for a butt weld on thin sheet with this particular welder and 0.6 millimeter wire, I find that that's a good starting point. The other big tip I can give you is get some decent light so you can see where you're welding. Now this is just something I've hacked together on my welding helmet. I don't I've never seen a welding hat with a light arrangement that you can buy from the shops, which surprises me because I think uh, that would be a good idea. So that's all I've done, it's just like an ordinary head torch. I've just bolted down to the top of my welding hat and it makes an enormous difference. Okay, so the next thing I want to demonstrate is plug welding. So again, first of all, get a nice clean surface on that. Plug welding is used to there's a flange usually between two pieces of metal so what I'll do is use my plug puncher and this just punches five mil holes now typically these are about two inches apart on a panel but I'll put them about an inch apart just to show them and these can be any any sort of size it could be up to eight mil if you're drilling out an existing one and reusing but this would be perfect for showing how this works two flanges and your bit's been spotted out and that's where they plug well together so if we get these under here let's see if we can get a nice tight shot of what's going on now you want these to be nice and tight to each other so lots of clamps usually in the order Okay, so the trick with the plug weld 
is reasonable power on the welder. Again, it's, it's trial and error. Aim somewhere around the centre of the, of, the, of the hole and just keep going until a puddle fills out. Hopefully this will show up. Hopefully you can see that aiming for the centre and keep going until the puddle fills us a hole. Let's try again. You aim for the middle of the hole, squeeze the trigger and see I've got the power up a little bit on the welder and squeeze and uh, uh, the trigger and let the puddle fill out to the edge of the hole and then stop and there's the other side look so you can see that looks like a proper spot welder so it is trial and error but it's, it's, it's something worth getting right because you use a lot of plug welding in restoring cars All right, the next one I'm going to go for is lap weld so I'll flatten this out so you've got a lap there we can use and this is probably the easiest of the welds because you, it's backed up. So you can lose, use a bit more power with this and very much less likely to blow through with this. So I'll set the camera up. I won't bother trying to do it through the green screen because I don't think that's working very well. And you'll see um, how I do a lap weld. Now, it is possible to run a bead with the lap weld and welders will probably tell you that's a better way of doing it for a stronger weld. And no doubt they're right. They know better than I do. But I still find dab 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 is a more controlled way of welding. I know some welders don't like it because each dab, like you see with the plug welds, looks like a fish eye. And so I've seen some videos on there, they just you run a run a beads of dab 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 and they just to them it looks like fish eyes. And that's fine, I understand that, they're the professionals and uh, they must cringe when I'm doing this. But this is what works for me, so this is what I'm trying to impart to you guys. You can see dab 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 and you get a nice bead going on there and where I'm aiming I've gone off track a little bit where I'm aiming is sort of halfway on the previous bead so I'm not going to start a new bead completely I'm carrying on the previous bead as we go in that's what I'm trying to do And there's the result. Again, you can see how much the heat has travelled. So if I was going a lot slower and took my time with that, the heat wouldn't travel so much. You wouldn't get so much of that distortion in the plate. It doesn't happen so much with a lap weld because it's backed up a bit better to control that distortion. But you see here now that's a nice weld. But if I had tried to run that in one go, I'd have made a mess of that. So this is, just, this is just what works for me as an amateur with doing this. You can control the heat as you go in. If it starts to melt away, stop, leave a little bit longer in between each puddle. All right, so the next one, what I want to try and demonstrate here if I can, is edge welding, but at the same time, getting one edge to match the other. So rather than trying to trim this to suit that, see this is an edge of a panel that had a shape to it, and you, you you had to back that up or come away from it. So, so it's like a edge of a, a scuttle, for example, or a bulkhead. So the idea is to tack this piece, these two pieces together, overlapping slightly, and then cut them to suit this piece, and then fully weld them and grind them up. So we'll do that, and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so we tack that onto there. Then we'll cut it and grind it and then show you what, what we do next.
So what we want to do now, take a grinder to it and cut down to that edge, then a flap wheel or a grinding stone to get that piece to suit this piece. So cut off first with a cutting wheel, then flat disc or a stone will do perfectly for this bit. And when you're touching this piece, stop. That's fine, it's, it's to the right level then. that does is a quick way of getting one piece to join the, be the same shape as the other piece. So what we'll do now is weld this along the top there and if we get decent enough penetration we won't need to weld underneath but it depends on how much of a curve you want on this. So what I'll do I'll weld both sides but if you want a fairly sharp edge then one side with decent penetration is enough but if you want a bit of a curve on it to match a profile, then welding both sides is the way forward. Right, actually this demonstrates something else we can do while we're here. So you can probably see I've weld, I've burnt through a hole there because I'm trying to go too fast here. So this is something that happens a lot when we're welding. So the idea is let it cool down and then you'll see what I do next. I just dab, 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 gently, gently, gently to get to, to fill a hole again. See? Hole gone. So don't despair if you make a hole. Just gently let it cool down. Dab, dab, just gently, gentle dabs. And you can get a little bit more carried away when you've got an edge like this because it doesn't, it, they distort less than a flat panel does. It still distorts, but you get away, get away with a bit more. So I'm just going to blast along here, but normally we do it a bit more uh, gently, a bit, bit more piecemeal. In fact, I'll show you what I would normally do, but I would do it a lot slower. So, which is a dab, dab, dab dab then join the dots So at this point you might be thinking, oh that looks horrendous, that's a horrible weld. And you'd be right, it does look like a horrible weld. 
mostly because it's the well is probably a little bit too cool there but all i want to do is build up a a, a a layer there really so the next thing to do is grinding this now if we just attack this with a grinder from that angle first we'll lose our edges so the idea and i've seen this on youtube with other guys so this is not something it's not my idea it's something i've picked up from other welders is grind one plane first and get then grind your other plane and what you get then is a nice sharp edge now sharp edge is what you want that's great leave it there but most car bodywork has a roll to it either from the where the factory is the panel stamped very few car panels have a nice sharp 90 degree edge so i'll show you how to get that right so imagine this is your part of your bodywork now so you can use either a flat wheel or a grinding stone i've got a flat wheel in a grinder right now the only downside i think with flat wheels is they'd put a fair bit of heat into a panel but that's not really going to matter for this demonstration a flat wheel grinding stone that makes no odds all we want to do now is grind flat on that plane there none of this just flat and you see quite quickly how that's come down to the base metal once you get to that stop move on We've got that plane ground time to move on to the the flat side You'll see there we now have a nice crisp sharp edge which follows the contour of the panel now the idea now is if you wanted to get that nice rounded edge this is where we start rounding off and this is where backing up with the weld from the other side gives you plenty of meat now, personally i found going at 45 first and then coming back to it so there you can see we got two sharp edges now so that plane that plane that plane with a 45 degree but see the gap on that is fairly consistent that's because we haven't gone like i guess first we can now control it better so now it's time to round it off So with this now, you'd probably go back over that with a couple of blobs of welded, clean that up with, or even some primer. It's, it's hardly anything in that, to be honest. It looks a lot worse than it is. A bit of primer filler would sort that out. But you can see, now that's got a nice round edge to it, and follows a nice profile. 
uh, that looks like something that's been bent at, at a factory for the shop as a, as a proper panel. As you can see it's quite easy to make up these pieces. Just gently, gently take your time. So hopefully that's demonstrated how that works. And you use that a lot on making body panels and copying panels and, uh, and what have you around the edges and stuff. Because you're, you're not going to do that in the benders. And you could make that piece by hand in one piece, but it's, that's a lot of work. And how much quicker it is just to knock it out like that. And it's just as strong uh, if the, as long as the welds are cleaned up properly underneath, if you can get to them and uh, painted, that's going to be just fine. Okay, so back to our butt welded piece. What I wanted to demonstrate here is grinding on a panel like this is, is different. So the idea is to just knock the heads off first of all and come back to it. And as you're grinding, as much as you try to keep these two pieces level to each other, you'll get little micro differences. If you see one side or the other touch, has to stop. When we come to it, I'll show you what I mean. So just knock the tops off first. So that's the top knocked off. Now for most welding, which is out of sight, or out of the way, that is fine. There's no need to do any more than that because the more you grind off, the, the, you're taking strength out of it. But for a, a panel which is facing, of course you need to go further. What you want to be doing as well, just checking the temperature of the panel, not getting too hot. Because you'd be surprised how much heat these can put into it. I hopefully here you'll see what I'm talking about. So you've touched that edge there and over here. That means that if you put a straight edge across there, it'll be level enough. Now there's hardly anything in that. Primer filler or skimmer filler would be would hide that nicely. There's no point grinding that any further. You're just taking strength out of it. Let's carry on down here. All right, same again. Touching one side or the other, stop grinding. Don't go any further. If you're grinding and the metal goes blue, you've already gone too far. If you see it go blue, definitely stop. Don't def definitely don't go any further. But that's really what you're after. And with a panel, you know that you can see from the profile there, that's plenty good enough. And a bit of filler would sort that out, no problem at all. Uh, as I said at the outset, I am an amateur. I don't uh, pretend to be professional. I don't do this for a job. It's not my trade. It's, this is just what works for me and hopefully it will work for you. So you've seen our uh, butt weld and ground off and you get to a finish which is usable. Uh, plug welding and lap welding and our edge welding and how to grind that off to get a nice factory sort of looking finish. So if you enjoyed that, please let me know. If there's anything else you'd like me to do a, a specific video on, on the things that I do, uh, let me know, because it's all content and it's uh, if it's something that'll help you, then it helps me as well, because it gets content out there and it gets videos out. And if it's something that will be useful to you and if enough people say, yeah, let, let's do that, that'd be brilliant. Why not? Nick? Okay, so thanks again for watching. And please do subscribe and uh, support the channel, share the channel, like and, and all that malarkey. It gets things moving along quite nicely.